So the first type of doubt is what I call the intellectual type of doubt, okay? Now usually this comes from the scientific community, right? Or people who like science, because we live in an age of scientific rationalism. By the way, Islam loves science. According to Western historians, Ibn al-Haytham, the first scientist was a Muslim, his name was Ibn al-Haytham. If you read the biographical works of Ibn al-Haytham, he had a big beard, mashallah, tabarakallah, and he prayed and he was a pious man. And he said, I only do the science because I want to find out the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the creative world. So, you know, with nothing to be ashamed of. But science has become like almost this social phenomenon now. That it's like, it's become a yardstick for everything. You know, it could get you married, pay your taxes, brush your teeth, <laughs> right? It's become like the religion of the white coat from a social perspective because it works, right? Now obviously the scientific academic community, they know just because something works, it doesn't mean it's true. And they know that science doesn't lead to certainty. They know this because it's ever changing and shifting. It's the shifting sands of science. For example, read any book on the philosophy of science by Hugh Goach, for example, right? Hugh Goach or even Alex Rosenberg or Stathis Psilos, all the philosophers, yeah, Elliot Sober, these are all mainstream philosophers of science that you read on a postgrad and undergrad level and they say there's no certainty here, if you want certainty go somewhere else, it's not in a science. Science is great, it works, it's beautiful, we love it, right? That's the nature of science, it's a useful tool. But what happens these days is just because we hear sometimes a scientific conclusion we go crazy. The amount of emails I get from Muslims, oh brother, they found the God particle, my Iman is low. And I'm like, oh my God, what is this guy talking about? You know, there's a, there's a popular magazine, yeah? God particle found, right? It's called the Higgs boson, right? And therefore, it shattered his Iman. He wasn't bothered to read the scientific paper. He read it in a newspaper, in a popular magazine. He has no idea what the Higgs boson is. Just because someone said, you know, a scientist said they found the God particle, therefore his Iman is low. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And it shows that we've, we've suspended our level of thinking. Do you know what the Higgs boson was? The Higgs boson was a particle, right, that they found, that made up the Higgs field. The Higgs field was switched on in the early universe to give particles mass apart from the photon. That's what it was. Someone, right, according to them, switched on the Higgs field and it gave particles mass apart from the photon. And what they found was the particle that made up the Higgs field. That's it. Doesn't deny God, doesn't affirm, got nothing to do with theology or creation, right? Nothing. And the reason they called it the God particle is because historically it was so hard to find they called it the God damn particle. And because they were lazy, then they called it the God particle. <laughs> and that's the point. It had nothing to do with, with, with theology. So, the reason I'm mentioning this, I know it's a crude example, but it's to show that science will never ever deny Allah. Ever. It can't. If you study the philosophy of science, it has no job. Because science, according to Eliot Sober, Professor Eliot Sober, restricts its attention to that which observations can solve. By the very definition of Allah, He's a metaphysical concept. Right? Meaning, He's not empirical. Laysa kemithli shay. Allah is inside or outside the universe? Outside of the universe. If I make the table, I don't become the table, right? If I, I'm a carpenter, I make the table, do I become the table? I am distinct and disjoined from the table. As Ibn Taymiyyah said, that creation is distinct and disjoined from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Laysa kemithli shay. Al-Ghazali said the same thing. All of our ulama said the same thing. The mainstream ulama. So, science can never affirm directly or deny directly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because it can only address that which observations can solve. For it now to start discussing the existence of Allah, it's outside of its methodology. It's like having two rooms. I know what's in this room, but I don't know what's in the next room. And just because I see a carpet in this room, I cannot conclude logically, therefore, there is no carpet in the other room. So if you claim to be a scientist and you claim to deny God based on science, it's equivalent of having two rooms, you don't know what's in the other room, you're in one room, and just because you can see a carpet in this room, you now conclude there's, there's no carpet in the next room. This is a logical fallacy, there is no logical leap, it doesn't follow. It's non sequitur, meaning it doesn't logically follow. 
And this is why I think it was Hugh Goat, he says, to basically suggest that science supports atheism, you get high marks for enthusiasm, low marks for logic, right? And any sincere academic science, scientist, go, go to Qatar Foundation, go to Education City, go to Oxford, go to Cambridge, ask a sincere scientist and a philosophy of science, a philosopher of science, and ask them, can science ever directly deny God? No, it can't. Because it's a metaphysical concept. Nothing which you observe can deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what science can do is a few things. Number one, stay silent on the topic. Or number two, maybe suggest evidence that you can use to infer that there is a there's a designer. But it can't directly deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone who knows their science, anyone who knows the philosophy of science can never deny God no matter what they say. You had some guy, I think he's in Victor Stenger, I think that's his name. He wrote a book, God the Failed Hypothesis, how science disproves God or something. It's a ridiculous book. Science can never deny God. All it can do is maybe suggest alternative models to explain how creation developed. But that's a different story, right? That's denying a creation story, that's denying how species were evolved or they're affirming a different kind of narrative or different theory for how species evolved. That's a different discussion. But to outright deny a creator for the universe, this is impossible. Science can't deal with that at all. And when